before y'all start complaining, I don't want to hear your shit. Sekiro is the best From Software game, for now at least. And I hope you all know who From Software is, or get out of the hole you've been living in. Speaking of holes, that's where we begin our game. We get a bit of backstory about Wolf, who was groomed, I mean trained, by Owl to be a great shinobi and was assigned a master to protect. But you failed miserably. And now you're just left cracked and sad. And unlike typical front software game where it's very medieval based and everybody looks like a local crackhead. <laughs> or an absolute monstrosity. <laughs> they even suggest you play in Japanese for that full Japanese shinobi experience. But I know from software and the English voice actors just hit different. <laughs> But you get a message from a mysterious figure, a lady figure, to get up and stop being a disappointment. And this is where a big emphasis on stealth is shown. Your first mission or quest in Soul's typical format is literally just stealth to get to your master, who you fail to protect. As well as you see the ability to eavesdrop your secret shinobi technique. Ooh. And you can listen on people. And it kind of gives a sense of character to everyone you're about to senselessly murder. You get to your master where there's a convenient hole in the side of the building he's in. How nice. And you learn he's a child. And then you pledge your undying allegiance to him. Nothing can go wrong, right? He gives you a sword and says, find the secret passage to escape, and then call him when he's ready. On your way there, you see that there is a stray from the traditional Dark Souls format. There is a big emphasis on parrying and stealth blows. Now yes, before this was in Dark Souls, but it was kinda useless. See, parrying was possible, but it was a lot harder than in Sekiro and wasn't as highlighted, as well as stealth blows. If you can sneak up on your enemy, you can instant kill them without ever having to worry about it. But there's a, no stamina in Sekiro. Instead, there's a posture meter. The more you parry and the more you hit your opponent, the more their posture goes up. Or goes down, I guess. The bar goes up. And so the more it goes up, and if it fills, you can get one of those instant kill death blows. Now yes, this does take time, but this is a lot quicker than slowly just dodging, hitting, dodging, and hitting. And is a lot better and fits Sekiro a lot. And you run into an enemy that teaches you this oh so well. But remember, stealth is also a big emphasis, so you can just completely avoid him if you want to. But you will find your way to the secret passage that your master was talking about. You call him over and then you go through the secret tunnel. Ooh. Oh, but I guess it wasn't that secret because there was a man waiting for us right there. Mr. Nichirios is waiting for us to strike and take the master. Hey, but last time I played a From Software game, you know, the boss killed me right away because I was supposed to die to that. I don't think they'll do that again. This is the first boss. This will teach me how to play the game, right? It's free real estate. Then you wake up next to an old crippled man, just like you. And he says he's the sculptor who was once a shinobi, just like you. And he replaces your arm with his old shinobi prosthetic. And this is the coolest and most unique thing about Sekiro. Number one is the traversal. Now you can sling onto stuff and zip and zap like Spider-Man. And second are the shinobi prosthetic tools. You will find these scattered around the whole game and Damn, are they useful. The first one is the shuriken, which you can use in a lot of different ways. And it's your main projectile, but then there's also the axe, which is very useful. The flame, which you can just burn people with that. The fireworks, which is the most useful, because it really should just be called the cheese-o-matic. <laughs> fucking loser. 
and those are some of the very first tools there is a lot more but a lot of times the shinobi prosthetic will be the difference between life or death in certain situations and with the shinobi prosthetic you're off to see the world but you also see a cut even more cut from the traditional soul games the stealth and posture are still very heavily shown, but there's also a new thing. You can no longer buff yourself to absolute monstrosity levels. In traditional Souls games, every time you would kill an enemy, you would get souls, and you would go back to your person and upgrade yourself to become stronger. In Sekiro, there is still that system in place, but you can no longer buff yourself to get stronger. What you can do is acquire new skills. But skills don't necessarily affect the game and making it absolutely easy. Skills just give you new ways to fight opponents and new ways to get around obstacles, like the Makiri counter. This is basically essential to the game, because any thrust attack you can counter by dodging forward and putting down the blade, which does a massive amount of posture damage and gives you a few free hits. And a lot also allow for cool stuff to do and combat arts, which is one of the new ways to fight enemies. Basically, it just gives you a strong move to pull off. Oh, but don't you worry. There are still ways to get out of the loser baby bitch levels that you start off at the beginning. The way you upgrade health is with prayer beads. You get these from killing mini bosses. Um, excuse me, where the fuck did I grab that from? And with four prayer beads, you can upgrade your health to the next level. And now you may be wondering, how do I upgrade my attack? Oh, we'll get to that soon enough. And you may be saying, this is a From Software game. This seems nothing like that. Well, the biggest thing that is in a constant and normal From Software games is their difficulty. You will die in Sekiro. You will die over and over and over. As well as you get punished for dying. Now in typical From Software matters, you lose your all your souls, but you can get them. In Sekiro, you lose half of the XP that you have acquired and half of the money that you have acquired. But don't worry, every once in a while you can get unseen aid that saves you from this happening. As well as Dragon Rock which is a disease that spreads throughout the land. <laughs> now what this does is make your chance for unseed aid less, as well as giving characters dragon rot, which you can also sometimes not progress through story, have worse items in the item shot, and so on. You can fix this though with a limited resource. But learning the land and learning the techniques, you run into your first true boss, not Mr. Cheerios who is meant to kill you. You run into- God damn my eardrums. And like I said earlier how I thought Mr. Cheerios was going to ease me into the game, this is the boss that will ease you into the game. You will die a few times, but he is probably the easiest in the game other than maybe one boss. Remember when I said earlier how I talked to you about getting your attack upgrade? This is how you do it. Every time you beat a boss, you will get a memory, and if you go to the idol, you can transfer that memory for more attack. And every boss you beat, you can get more attack. But once you beat him, the game's kind of free to you. That was the first path you really had to take. After this, you can go on and fight whichever boss you want. You want to fight Mr. Cheerios again? Go for it, Lady Butterfly. Up to you. You want to go fight the folding screen monkeys? Go put yourself through that. You can go fight the monk and cheese him the fuck out. Or put yourself through hell. If I die one more time to this goddamn monkey, call me Frieza, cause I'm about to- <laughs> Oh 
Now, the path I took, I started off by fighting Lady Butterfly, but she is also an optional boss, but still a good one to fight. And then I went to Mr. Cheerios. How you like me now, bitch? Like I said before, Mr. Ni Cheerios and how I thought he would teach me how to play the game, he actually does. He's the first boss that really gets you into that parry system, Makiri counters, and seeing what you have to do, like jumping and dodging. And he really gets you into what Sekiro is, and that's personally why he's my favorite, because he generally teaches you how to play the game. Then next, I went on to the Folding Screen Monkeys, which is more like a puzzle boss. I didn't really like them because they're very annoying, and every time you get close to one of the monkeys, they just run away, which is very annoying. And it may take a little, but it will not kill you because they try to have, like, shadows around. You can just run away or, like, easily kill those with, like, a shinobi prosthetic. Then the Corrupted Monk are the easiest boss in the game because you can just cheese this motherfucker with firecrackers or snap seeds in an instant and the last boss i went to fucking guardian eight forget everything i said about a parry system in this game this motherfucker throws all that shit out the window and actually throws his shit at you but this game is one of my favorites the world building is incredible and you actually feel like there's a sense to all the characters my favorite ishan who literally just watches from afar but we all know that he could kick everyone's ass if he wanted to my one big complaint is from software was just very fucking cheeky when they were making this game See, every boss, you know, has that secret final phase where it's like, this is not even my final form. You start it off with Genichiro, where he goes into Genichiro of Tome form, then Lady Butterfly, where she has her second phase, then fucking every boss does that, even the final boss. And you're like, god fucking damn it. But then you realize, oh, there's a pattern. I have to see Shinobi execution, and then I know they're truly dead. Then they just pull this <laughs> what the fuck? For you defeat all these bosses, you will return and see that Ashina Castle is a little weird, and the only idol you can travel to is the one at the abandoned dungeon entrance. You travel to that, and Ashina Castle has changed. There are new enemies, new placements, and everything. And you have to get your way back to where you fought Mr. Cheerios, and you'll see your daddy. And he'll give you a choice, either succumb to the grooming or stay with a child. But this is the choice that actually really affects the game. You can either stay with him or stay with Kuro. And this is where I'm probably going to end it off because it just changes like the story completely and it gets into a lot of spoilers. Sekiro, personally, is my favorite and the best from software game. I know I've only played these three, but I'm the guy on the internet, not you. I recommend all of you pick this up right now. I know Elden Ring is literally right around the corner, but you should play this game before you play Elden Ring, because I heard that they are actually taking a lot from this and the Souls game as well. But this game is incredible. I know all the Dark Souls tards are going to be like, there is no like customization and shit. The customization comes in how you play. And I feel as if, if people don't play this game, they're really missing out. This game is incredible, probably one of my top 10s in general. And if you don't play it, you're a fucking loser. You'll only slightly regret playing this game. He threw his fucking shit at me. This is 9.5 out of 10.